Support for this podcast and the following message come from Corient. Corient provides wealth management services centered around you. They focus on exceeding your expectations and simplifying your life. Corient has been helping high achievers just like you enjoy their lives more fully, preserve their wealth, and provide for the people, causes, and communities they care about. As one of the largest integrated fee-only registered investment advisors in the U.S., Corient has deeply experienced teams in 23 strategic locations. Corient has extensive knowledge spanning the full spectrum of plan investing, lending, and money management disciplines. Leverage Corient's exclusive network of experts to craft custom solutions designed to help you reach your financial goals, no matter how complex they may be. Real wealth requires real solutions. For more information, connect with a wealth advisor today at Corient.com. That's C-O-R-I-E-N-T.com. Corient.com. Hey y'all, Darius Rucker here. You know, a lot of people ask me, what inspires your music? And one of the big things is a strong sense of place. That's why I love my home state of South Carolina and want to share the awesome things it has to offer. From the beautiful mountains down to the sunny coast, it's got it all. Not to mention two of my personal favorites, great golf and amazing food. Come see why I love this place. Visit discoversouthcarolina.com. Welcome to Comedy Album Book Club. This is Matt, your host. This week I'm joined by Allison Dicey, Ellie Heath, and Kaylee Suliak, also known as Girl Brain. This Edmonton-based sketch comedy troupe were making their second appearance at the Toronto Sketch Comedy Festival, and were able to take some time to sit down with me to talk about Mike Birbiglia's Sleepwalk with Me. Now, the festival is still on, so if you have a chance, get out to the, get out to see some great sketch comedy. You have until March 15th. If you aren't in Toronto but are in Edmonton, Girl Brain make regular appearances at the Roxy about once every three months. So I highly recommend getting out there and seeing whatever show they're putting on. They do a lot of original material every performance, so it's well worth getting out there to see. Mike Birbiglia is an actor, comedian, director, improviser, and storyteller. A multifaceted talent, he was born in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts in 1978 and springboarded his success and contributing to This American Life into multiple screen appearances, directing opportunities, writing projects, as well as creating not one, but two films, as well as several specials and albums. His second film, Don't Think Twice, is based on his own improvising experiences and as somebody who's taken improvising classes and done some improvisation himself I can tell you I've met every single one of those people in that movie and I am probably a pretty close match to at least one of them Sleepwalk with me is a much more intimate story it is a direct story from his life recounting anxiety depression and the human brain uh, how it copes with these things when we least expect it. Uh, Sleepwalk With Me was recorded at The Moth in New York City as part of a storytelling series in August of 2008. It was later used as a part of This American Life's episode 361, The Fear of Sleep, before being adapted into an album and a film. Uh, it's an interesting juxtaposition. The album... Uh, is pretty much exactly the same as the This American Life special, with a little bit added on to the end, the beginning and the end, which gives it a much more robust feel. We, we talk about this during the show. The film is a completely different beast, uh, and is well worth watching, but has a very different feel. So sit back, and if you haven't already listened to it, give Sleepwalk Me a, a listen. It's available on all uh, streaming services. Check out the movie if you can as well for an interesting juxtaposition. And if you have the opportunity, try to catch the recorded special from The Moth. Once you've done one or all of those, come on back and listen to us chat with Girl Brain. All right, so today I am here with Girl Brain uh, from Edmonton. They're in Toronto for the uh, Sketchfest 2020. Uh, I'm joined by Allison, Kaylee, and Ellie. So thank you for joining me today. 
So. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we talked to you last Sketchfest, so this is your second one. Um, how are you enjoying it? Oh, it's so great. Yeah, we we flip and love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, so much fun. <laughs> Uh, so is there any shows that have you seen or anything that you've done that's really that are stood out this year? Yeah, like uh, we saw Carson and Trevor do a bunch of flips. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. <laughs> um, and we saw... We saw Cam uh, Wiley's 25th anniversary show. That was also really good. Oh my gosh, yeah. Just did a lot of the heavy hitters. Yes. Of I'm the excited to... comedy scene. John I can't Blair wait to was see... great too. Oh yeah, he was oh. awesome. Also, I hate to... I think it was Taylor... Carson and Taylor. Yeah, Carson and Taylor. Oh, my bad. You said Trevor. Trevor, but how dare Sorry. you? <laughs> Sorry, Taylor. So uh, great. you guys have been performing for a few years now. Like, how did you all sort of meet and and sort of become a troupe? Uh, well, Kaylee and I. So this is Ellie talking. Uh, Kaylee and I met when we were fifteen at uh, drama camp, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then Allison and I met about seven years ago. Um, no, actually eight years ago, uh, doing a fringe uh, touring production. And the three of us were actresses in Edmonton, so we sort of knew each other just from the community there, and mm -hmm. were friends and. Uh, out of work actresses, <laughs> but also like all really good writers, and and uh, and so we just decided to collaborate. Excellent. And what drew you specifically to comedy as a as a platform? Like, w w what was uh, like not necessarily as a troupe, but just individually? Like, what made you find like I want to use comedy to just tell stories and make jokes? Well, I think um, we were all just kind of like sitting around laughing one day. Uh, at each other's stories and we were like well you know what like maybe maybe other people will find this funny too and it kind of happened coincidentally with um a new theater mm -hmm. opening in edmonton that was specifically a comedy theater oh. and they were kind of looking for you know there was a lot of improv that they had scheduled and they were kind of looking for you know more more sketch troops and something a little bit more theatrical so uh yeah we pitched them the idea of uh of girl brain and they were like yeah sure and we were like well i guess we're doing this now i hope people find us funny <laughs> <laughs> well i mean you, you you've gotten great reviews you've toured and done festivals not just in toronto but all over the place yeah, yeah. um we did toronto sketch fest last year uh we also did philly sketch fest which, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun um we did central florida sketch fest uh we've been to winnipeg We've been to Fairview, Alberta. That thriving and, metropolis. And we've yeah. been to Fort Saskatchewan. <laughs> <laughs> and we will go anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> you got to go where the comedy takes you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, my grandfather is actually from the prairies. He was from actually Saskatchewan, and he was a musician. Oh. And it, like he wrote a ballet all about uh, Shadow on the Prairie, which is all about living in the prairies going insane uh, kind of thing yeah. so he, yeah. so it really informed his work do you find you know growing up uh, like being from from edmonton and and being in alberta how does that define or how does that like shape your your material hmm. that's, that's a good question question i have like a little bit of a theory just in and i think that this is just about uh, Canada, like in general, and and comedians in Canada, because I find people in Canada are very funny. Mm -hmm. And even when we were like in Philly Sketchfest, I, uh, not to like denote or you know say that the the people from uh, Philly were not funny, but like I just found that the comedians from Canada were really strong, and I think that a lot of it is just those long winters, yeah. not really having a lot to do. Um, yeah, you have to find ways to entertain yourself and to survive and to thrive and keep life colorful, even yeah. despite the snow and the muck and the gray. And so I feel like uh, being in the prairies where things are pretty flat and pretty uh, colorless for most of the year, mm -hmm. being creative is is a real uh, respite. Mm -hmm. Now, um, your show, which I saw uh, the first night, it was super energetic. It was awesome. So I'm I'm glad I got to see it. Uh, what is your pro? Because you had a lot. You had the the skillet as the, sort of the through line, <laughs> yep. um, but you had a lot of sort of different 
different angles and different different sort of ideas in there. So what's your process for when you sit down to write a, a, a show? Like, how, how do you approach it? Do you come with just like, these are the ideas and then find the thing or uh, like the, the, the nub to get you through it? Or do you come with that idea and then build out? Like, what, what do you do to... to I think to... we're still experimenting and learning. Um, and the, the opportunity to go to festivals like this has really taught us a lot because we get to see more than just what's going on in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. um, we usually write on a theme and we write separately and then we will have like a deadline or whatever and then come together and then collaborate off of that. Um, and it's nice that we get to do regular shows in Edmonton. We mm -hmm. started off doing a monthly show. So we generated a lot of material in the first year. And now we do um, longer shows uh, kind of less less frequently. So mm -hmm. it's like bi-monthly. Yeah. Um, I, I guess for this one... That skillet silliness, mm -hmm. um, I kind of came up with that. That was it's just a little nugget, and then it transformed into something that w ended up being the whole show. Like that took us through. So sometimes, like we don't do that, but I think we're getting better at that and seeing other shows, um, like Craig Scorgie's show and stuff that kind of inspired us to have a journey and take us on a. Um, a theatrical arc for the whole mm -hmm. show. Yeah, so it's more like a we're exper experimenting. Sorry, it's more like a like a play. Yeah. Format instead of just like sketch and sketch and sketch and it's like it's nice to see a through line a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it can it can help like having done some in the past. It can also help like really in keep the audience on board when you might have something that doesn't necessarily play as well as something earlier. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, okay, well get where we're going kind of thing yeah yeah so. yeah i think too like just as we've uh grown and stuff uh we love doing character work and mm -hmm. we love uh getting out of our ourselves and playing crazy characters but yeah. at the same time as we grow and uh as our audience becomes more familiar with us it's nice to sort of uh experiment with playing ourselves on stage yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, allowing our audience to get to know us better uh, and and who we are, you know, just as people. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Now you've done. You mentioned doing a bunch of festivals. Uh, during the album, you uh, you, know, you all laughed mm -hmm. at the uh, the um, deli line. Joke. Oh right! Oh my gosh! So, have yeah. you had that, any yes. bananas types of gigs where you're like, why am I performing here? Yes, Fort Saskatchewan <laughs> at. Which is a great little place. It is a great, <laughs> it's a great <laughs> place. But yeah. we happen to find ourselves at a, a bar, which is mm. not a great venue. We've discovered for sketch comedy because it's super loud, and people want to talk and drink and have a nice night the way that you and know. not necessarily mm. listen to what's if, going on. If on there's stage. a band playing at a bar, I feel like you mm. can enjoy it and still, you know, have a conversation. Mm. No, sketch comedy doesn't work that way. You gotta listen to the setup. <laughs> it's been it's been really interesting because uh, we all have like a theater background. Mm -hmm. um, it's been really interesting just uh, delving into sketch comedy because I feel like a lot of people don't know what sketch comedy is. Uh, yeah. You tell people we're you know we're sketch comedians. We do sketch comedy, and they go, "Oh, improv." It's like, uh, no, uh, we write, we write our sketches and we rehearse them and perform them. And then some people think it's stand up. And uh, we've definitely had gigs where we got booked, and I don't think that they had any concept of what we do. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's very interesting. And that that bar gig in Fort Saskatchewan, uh, I don't think that they knew really how what we do was going to play out in that scenario yeah. and yeah it felt really off brand <laughs> yeah uh, now so that's like the 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 bad end of things is there a, a performance that you really like a zany performance that you really enjoyed like anywhere where oh, yeah. thing like, oh, God. Yeah. like all of last them. night last night <laughs> yeah last night yeah, was awesome. comedy bar yeah dream come true also yeah. we have um like us all being actors and we went through acting school and dreaming of performing on the Citadel stage and we got to do that in November. Awesome. And we Yay. did it with our own material and it felt 
fucking gangbusters. It's awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Honestly, nice. um, any of our shows that that we do and we produce in Edmonton are stellar and like just so enjoyable and it's been really great like as we've grown and and been together we've really built a truly like great audience like our audience is so behind us and so supportive and so loving and we just feel like every time we get up on stage uh at the Roxy which is our new venue that we're performing Mm -hmm. in we are met with such massive love and it's it's just astounding yeah it's incredible and we we get that kind of feedback like from other audience members or like guests that we have on the show as well. Mm-hmm. They're just like, "What you like the the energy in the room is insane." I mean, like, and you've had some terrific guests too. I mean, yeah. you had members of Baroness One Sketch on the show and stuff. Yeah. Like you had you colla- being able to collaborate with some really amazing people. So that's got to be yeah. yeah. Honestly, uh, I think part of what we do, part of our mandate, is to. Uh, sp- spread love and support and empowerment and so to be able to give uh the opportunity to other artists from from other performance aspects like music or or burlesque or stand-up comedy and to be able to like grow other people's audiences Mm -hmm. is so awesome well today we listened to mike birbiglia's sleepwalk with me Mm -hmm. um so what uh led you to choose this album (laughs) I really love that he is, um, it's almost like a one-man show. Like, mm-hmm. he, he's very theatrical and a really, really good writer. Yeah. Um, so we kind of relate to that, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very good storyteller. Yeah. 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 A lot of the, like, a lot of the um, inspiration that we get for our own sketches comes from our own lives. Yeah. And uh, so I think... Yeah, listening to Mike Birbiglia, like a lot of his material is drawn from his own life experiences. Mm -hmm. And also, too, he's so down to earth. And I find that a lot of his comedy is really just, I don't know, simple and accessible. And also um, not offensive, really inclusive. And yeah, I just, his energy is really great and really grounded and... He seems like a good human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what was all of your first introduction to Mike Birbiglia's work? Like, where did you first hear it? This American Life. I, I yeah. heard him for that same one that we listened to. Uh, the first time that I heard Mike Birbiglia, I was in a truck with Allison driving back from Regina. We went to Regina to audition oh, for something. Right. And we, I, I feel like we listened to Sleepwalk with me. Oh. And I also kind of fell asleep during it. <laughs> but also I just remember thinking that he was really great and I, yes I did fall asleep but it was it was a very long drive. Um <laughs> but yeah, it was with Allison. Oh, yeah. that's a nice story. <laughs> Driving back from Regina. I remember that <laughs> night actually because it was super late. We drove there and back in the same day and the stars were incredible. We actually were... stopped and got out to look at them. Didn't wow. we see the Northern incredible. Lights? Yeah, we saw the Nor- yep, wow. Northern Lights. Yeah. <laughs> I also, um, this is way too much information, <laughs> but uh, we had this audition and I pooped a lot and I thought I had diaper rash. And after we got back from that trip, I found out I had herpes. So. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, Oh, a lot wow. happened at that trip. <laughs> what happens in Regina yeah, yeah. comes home from Regina. I did not I did not contract I did not contract herpes in Regina, but I did in my Regina. Oh no. <laughs> uh, um all right, well <laughs> Transitioning from that, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Mike, he's he's like a trained improviser. He's a stand-up comedian. Um, he's a writer of you know, books and film. Um, how do you think the uh, like improv and like because he's got a very natural flow mm-hmm. to him, and it's like there's like this this is like genuineness to to his entire storytelling. So how do you think things like improv and all of that sort of collaborated like? it went to shape this this conversation that I guess he had with the audience I think like the more you do uh improv and the more you do uh comedy I think you get 
this is going to sound so cheesy, but like mm. you get your authentic self like up to the surface. Mm -hmm. And so it's just ready to bam, like pop out at any point. And I think that that's what helps create like a really natural conversation between a performer and an audience member is if mm. you can let them in and like show yourself and the more you're kind of forced out of your comfort zone and like forced out of playing other characters and just into into yourself and like into revealing ridiculous things like he says climbing up on top of a five <laughs> a five foot dresser and then falling off of it like the weirder you are and the more willing you are to reveal that I think it just becomes easier to talk to people because they're they're like oh yeah I'm weird too <laughs> yeah. I want to let you in yeah. yeah it's interesting to me so my dad uh is a singer songwriter and he's really has a lot of stage fright and mm. um a lot of it is around forgetting lines and fucking up and uh yeah, not being perfect on stage. Yeah. And I always say to my dad that people just want to see a human being in mm -hmm. front of them. They want to see themselves uh, mirrored on stage. And so I think fucking up is part of life. And mm -hmm. if you fuck up on stage and somebody sees it, uh, you're immediately, it humbles you and it also lets them in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like a lot of improv is is doing it and not being afraid to fail and and also just accepting failure you know yeah. like accepting that it's not going to be perfect uh but if you're there and you're present uh something magic you know something some magic might happen yeah uh but failure is is part of life and failure is part of the the experience of being on stage so i think that mike berbiglia like one of the things that i like about him is that he's just He's very present, and mm -hmm. I feel like he's not perfect, and and yeah, if he stumbles, like it's he's the part of that, like being genuine is yeah. he accepts, you know, the moments that he stumbles over, which mm -hmm. is really humbling and lovely. Mm -hmm. Um, like it's it's one of the things that I I really enjoyed about this. There's not a wasted moment in the entire yeah. story. Like I everything know. informs something further oh down the chain oh, yeah. or yeah. or then calls back to something earlier like yeah, yeah. he's great at the uh, yeah like and i re-listened to the this american life episode mm -hmm. um which is all about sleep fear mm -hmm. uh to, because i was like oh, okay that's where i first heard it mm -hmm. and and then i'm like i went back the i went back and forth between that and the album and it's interesting because like the, the that came out in 2008 and uh stranger in the night i think is what they called the the section and it comes in maybe about a third of the way in. It comes in at the jackal moment. So you miss all of the setup, all of the stuff about the doctor and stuff. And it's like, I like, I don't know. It's like, what? It, sorry, I'm fumbling over my words. <laughs> uh, but it, it's interesting because that's that's the most important setup. Like that, all of that stuff about the, the cancer scare and going to the doctor and then the muffin, uh, mm -hmm. all of that informs all of his actions later on that anxiety which is really the underlying theme of the entire album is like anxiety can kill you don't let it rule you mm -hmm. uh like is lost yeah and yeah. it's like it's you know, how important is that, that that like laying down that runway for when you're writing a sketch like or writing something like a story like this well it's it's almost like um a magic trick like mm. <laughs> that's what I I kind of felt oh, as we were listening to that and when like uh, there's a, moments where I cried and there's moments where I was like on the edge of my seat and like mm. howling with laughter but it was all like I got to those high emotions because of the setup yeah. and yeah. like you're not gonna go holy shit you had the card in your hat the whole time like, <laughs> like you unless you are like there's no way he's gonna pull a, a card out of whatever it, it just feels like a magic trick where um it it all comes together and there's like how the heck did he manipulate me so much <laughs> to get me to this emotional state <laughs> even his pauses are great yeah like the pauses that he took there are a couple 
like long ones near the end and I'm like, it's over now. Oh, nope. Yeah. Here's another callback. And then like, yeah, he just has you like so captivated that you'll listen to his silence. Yeah, And I mean, the, the silence is almost as important as the words at times oh, too, because 100%. it's giving you a moment for a, like a joke to sit in or, or when he goes dark and heavy yeah. and like lays out that truth or honesty. Yeah. He's really uh, good at that. He yeah, earns yeah, those moments. Just, it lets it sink in. It's like like the moment when he you know, revealed about cheating on his partner. Oh, yeah, you're whereas all like, like oh, no. oh dude, oh, that's horrible. No. And he's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was here too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he says, I'm in the future yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to reiterate, when that moment happened, we all went, oh, oh no. no, and he immediately <laughs> said, I know. <laughs> it felt like we were in a conversation yeah, together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, that, and that's something too. It's like that felt very genuine. Like he knows what, he, like he's built mm -hmm. the story so carefully and planned out it's very precise every move so well. He knows wh where it's you're beautiful. gonna go. Yeah. Well, it yeah. felt like a work of art. Yeah, it felt brilliant. Like yeah. in that moment when we all said, "Oh, oh no, no, we're not in the room with him," but like he had that timing. He responded so... immediately. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, we were the audience, even though we weren't. Yeah. Now. Um, one of the things I really appreciate too is he's not afraid to be honest about his blemishes as yeah. a as a human being, like yeah. the like bringing out the element that he um, was unfaithful to his girlfriend, mm -hmm. uh, that he you know he wanted to marry her, but he was this anxiety that dominated his life led him to being afraid of that and that ruined his relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he. he, he he also did a movie. Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't think twice, which I actually watched oh, yeah, today. A great movie. Yeah, yeah. Or it's just full of all these people that I I love. Yeah. Um, and you know he he plays the kind of you know and if you if you've ever been in the improv community, you literally know every <laughs> single character yeah. in that. There's you in your life. You're like I know that person. <laughs> oh, that person's this person here. Yeah. And he plays like the the slightly creepy older guy but you know it's just not not deliberately creepy just he never grew up so he still thinks he's like 23 yeah. um so he's never afraid to commit to the honesty of a person which and it doesn't necessarily they're not villains yeah he's not like trying to like oh this is evil it's just like this is humanity he's like yes, and definitely. it's I, I find that really intriguing do you do you find that kind of um drive in your work to present yeah. like honesty and, and oh, definitely and... absolutely well i think uh one thing that um uh, that i really like about him is that i feel like he is really willing to showcase his blemishes and his flaws but mm -hmm. it's it's his blemishes and flaws right yeah uh, right. i don't ever feel like he's drawing a huge you know, this is what people are like, or I'm going to say this about humanity and yeah. about mankind. Yeah. He's just saying, this is who I am, and these are the challenges that I face. And so it feels really personal, and it feels like you can you can connect on it or connect to it in a personal way without feeling like you're being judged. Yeah. yeah. And I really feel that that's like an in for us in, in the work that we do, um, because so much of what inspires us and so much of what we write about is drawn from our personal lives. And so mm -hmm. we're, we're often saying things about who we are as humans rather than like mm -hmm. drawing a, a big, you know, overdrawn portrait of humanity or, or who people are, or who women are, or who men are. Yeah. It's just our personal experiences. And so, yeah, in that way, I think that's why we were really drawn to Mike Birbiglia's work. Yeah. Uh, right. Sorry, go ahead. And like L.A. was saying earlier, like one of our goals is to celebrate young women. Mm -hmm. And I think a way that we accomplish that is by showing that we, mm -hmm. who people sometimes look up to, are not all that perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> make fun of ourselves and we say, um, <laughs> like, I yeah. had a big poop in Regina <laughs> and yeah. found I've, out got I had herpes. Herpes. Um, I've got anxiety and we talk about anxiety and depression a lot in our show mm -hmm. and and I think that just shining a light on those imperfections actually is a way of celebrating how great we are <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah. also like turning the imperfections into comedy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like 
it makes it easier for everybody to talk about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you can actually, if you can laugh about it, then that totally opens up a conversation more than, you know, taking the blemishes super seriously because then it makes you feel like, yeah, yeah, there's something wrong with you for having it. But, you know, there could be millions of other people that have the same blemish. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it, it, it. I just, I truly like love his work for that same yeah. reason. Or it's oh, like yeah. just, just like highlighting humanity through himself. It's, it's interesting yeah. because it's like a neat intersection of like three different skill sets in mm-hmm. it. And I think this is possibly like I tried his. There's his the new one, which is his Netflix special that just came out recently, yeah. where he's talking about um, becoming a dad. It's uh, so good. Yeah, where it's like, and it's 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 amazing, and it's like. It follows a similar sort of style Mm -hmm. where I think he sort of perfected this balance of like stand up and improv and storytelling, which are all three sort of separate pools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but here's the thing. They're not like they 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 are, but they they inform one another. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like I find it's interesting because um, I think just in comedy, it can feel so separate, like improv, sketch comedy, stand up uh theater um but i in where we're from in edmonton there's a theater uh the grindstone theater and there's they it's a comedy theater and so there's stand-up and there's improv and there's sketch comedy there and i feel like uh from producing shows there and being being there we've all gotten to know each Mm -hmm. other and i feel like uh blending into one another is a really good thing I, i i think that uh, all all those forms of comedy really inform each other, yeah. and so it's it's amazing that he's able to to blend those together. Um, but it it also makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's like people try to silo it off. Like I've yeah, been, I've been sort of doing all of them over the last couple of years mm-hmm. and growing and trying to experiment. Like this year, I finally started doing stand up, and I sort of skew more towards the Mike Birbiglia storytelling mm-hmm. side of things, Which is just great. because that's just my yeah, natural. Yeah way of expressing yeah mm-hmm. but it's like it's like yeah it's like the skills that i learned in doing sketch stuff the skills mm-hmm. that i learned it's all they all sort of inform one another and i think exactly it, yeah it's like getting that cross-pollination is really good yeah. yeah yeah well and it's nice i don't know the thing that i really like about mike birbiglia is i feel like he has a, a genre all on his own like he's yeah. created something that is uh, very genuine and authentic to who he is and, and the, you know, what he wants to communicate. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that really resonates with us because uh, coming from a theater background into sketch comedy uh, and, and also too, a lot of people in sketch comedy have an improv background, which we yeah. don't. And uh, sometimes I think, you know, I, and I'm just speaking personally, it's like, Oh, well maybe we should have more improv experience, but it's like, no, fuck it. Like, we're coming at this how we come at it. Yeah. And nobody can do what we do mm-hmm. and we don't do what other people do. And that's fine. And that's mm-hmm. great. And so, yeah, it's great to see somebody like Mike Birbiglia, who is not necessarily like other standups, but who cares? He's himself he's and him. he's yeah. and he's yeah. fucking rocking what he does. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, have you seen the movie adaptation of this? No. I think I, I have some parts of it. <laughs> I, 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 I watched it. Up like about a week ago because mm-hmm. it's been on my list to watch for a while so i'm like mm-hmm. oh now I, i'll watch it and i'd already listened to the album a couple of times yeah at that point and i'm like it doesn't work i mean it's good yeah if you hadn't heard like even the truncated this american life version which is really all it covers mm-hmm. it 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 still it just doesn't land the same way which yeah. i found really interesting like mm-hmm. that that conversation because they have him as the narrator Mm -hmm. and you've got this like the the conceit is you're in the car with him while he's touring and he's coming home and he's telling you the story Mm -hmm. and then it cuts to these moments the cast is all amazing it's like everybody up and down the cast list is somebody i love yeah watching on the screen Uh, but there's just something about like the intimacy of him telling you the story Mm. versus seeing it shown on the screen and like literally like there's all these little tiny jokes like little call outs that if you're like if you've listened to the album if you've listened to the 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 moth present like presentation you go oh that's hilarious i know that um but it just doesn't land well i think a lot of it is um 
Like when you listen to a comedy album, it's kind of like listening to a music album. Yeah. Where you really have to, like, if you want to get it, you really have to like sit down and listen and pay attention, you know. Um, mm. And he- hearing something leaves so much up to your imagination mm. too. Like, I guarantee you, I laughed so hard at some of these mm. things because I was just picturing him yeah. 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 doing it in my brain. And so to see some Absolutely. things acted out might like ruin it a little bit and like distance yourself from the like experience that you've created in your mind Mm -hmm. as well you know Well, just like in everyday life you know there's people that are really good at telling stories yeah and they can make going to the corner store to grab a cup of coffee the most interesting thing that you've ever heard yeah when in all reality they just went down to the corner store to grab a cup of coffee you know and like I feel like he is one of those people and so to hear it from his point of view is the is the entertainment factor. Yeah. Whereas if you were to put it in literal terms it might not be as interesting. Yeah. It's it's funny because like it is almost like this was too close in some ways because like this being a real like he directed and like I think uh, this American life funded it kind of thing so it was like a this American life production the first time they funded a film. Um, oh, wow but it's like i i think he it almost felt like he was too close to the material in some ways mm-hmm. that it didn't breathe in the mm-hmm. same way that he had the gave it room to breathe when telling the story yeah yeah um, well it was his first yeah it was big break right is yeah that was sort of what broke him was that this american life episode really went big yeah and then he got a lot of buzz from that and it was like an off-broadway show for a while and then became the movie, and it, with like the, by contrast, the, the like don't don't think twice. Yeah, felt much more natural. It felt it felt like a better film. Yeah, to me than Sleepwalk with Me, mm-hmm. because it's like it, there was a distance. He wasn't playing himself. He wasn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they they twisted the chronology around a little bit, so it's like because he he actually breaks up with his first girlfriend before mm-hmm. the window incident and they sort of turn that around and they also like change like the like he in and it's, so it's funny these little they movied, details they movied it yeah they movied <laughs> it and it's these little nudges one way or another like the the wedding was his sister's wedding mm-hmm. and that instead of his brother's wedding but the wedding is what inspired the 3 a.m disappearing act that mm-hmm. his girlfriend went on so just it just shifted things around in this way that it's like it really made me appreciate the little nuances mm-hmm. when building a story like even these little details of pacing things and being honest with the details can really impact how something lands well and i think too um and i don't <laughs> i don't know exactly what happened mm-hmm. with it with that thing but i think sometimes when um you get really big really fast like maybe you don't get the opportunity to like you're growing so fast and you want to uh please everybody and sometimes you lose sight of your your mandate and your actual vision and Mm -hmm. perhaps there was a little bit of that because i know with us like you know as we've grown we're we're always trying to you know keep our mandate in sight but there have been times where we've done shows where it's like we we looked back after the fact and it's like well was that you know was that the best way to launch at that i I think i don't know yeah does that make sense (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. um so are there any comedians that you feel are sort of similar to him in a way like like very story driven that that or uh, that you can you you can get that same vibe from him or really? the angel. Uh, Hannah uh, Gadsby. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. for next, sure. That was um, similar. Uh, Tig Notaro. Mm. Uh, that was another story storytelling and thing. very personal. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. They let us in to yeah. a very intimate part of their life. Yeah. Mm. Um, I really love British comedy. So Greg Davies. Okay, yeah. He's mm. so good at the storytelling and just being authentic and making mm. himself look like such an oaf <laughs> on stage. <laughs> and uh, same with Jack Whitehall. He's got like 
a little bit more of a manic energy to him. Yeah, yeah. But it's still like he's he's real good at storytelling and like you know, like you said, going to the corner store to pick up a croissant, he could make it sound like the most epic journey. Yeah. And then he can tie it all together really well too. Those are two that yeah. I like. I, I, I watched uh, Pete Davidson's special recently, and that was somebody I actually was a little surprised that sort of had that oh, feel SNL. to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So oh, okay, yeah, it just it, came out on Netflix. On Netflix, yeah. yeah. Okay, and I cool. was like, I didn't expect, because I mean, he was a stand-up first, but I mean, mm-hmm. he's, he, was, it was, like, he was doing it super young. Mm-hmm. And I didn't expect him to be as story driven when it came to his special i mean it's still jokey Mm -hmm. but it's really a through line about his experiences over the last couple of years and uh how was it it was better than i expected i mean it is i mean i knew he was good he's just not my generally not being my kind of comedian in the stuff that i've Mm -hmm. seen because it's sort of like just being a type it's sort of like a cheech and chongy kind of humor mm, yeah, yeah. which is like it's, it's good it's just yeah. not my bag yeah, yeah. But this one was more personal and more like he does mm-hmm. this he talks about his dad a bit but he sort of like he removes those jokes slightly from the rest of the set talked about like how you know his anxiety and depression mm-hmm. and like how dating ariana grande really mm-hmm. impacted mm-hmm. that and for the worse in some ways but also he has that to thank for almost all of his success in a lot of ways. So it's very personal and it doesn't necessarily go into the same details, but it's like sharing these little intimate stories yeah. throughout, which is like, I was like, I was kind of shocked, but then you look at like, he hangs out with John Mulaney, who's I think one of the mm. best comedians out there right now. So he's, yeah. he's like, he, he's got a lot of people who believe in him. So yeah. there's gotta be something there yeah. and that, that for people to think. So yeah, that's, that was one that I was sort of shocked by. That interesting. He interesting. sort of went down that path because I just expected him to be more jokey yeah. than, mm-hmm. than that. I also really loved uh, the series crashing. Oh yes. Um, Pete Holmes, right? Yes. Yeah. Pete okay. Holmes. I'm like, it's Pete something. I think it's Holmes, but I'm thinking about Mike Holmes as well. <laughs> you got to build a house and tell a joke. Yeah, yeah. You make um, it but... weird all at the same time. But yeah. Make it weird. Oh, I love that podcast. Oh uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I really love that series. I felt like it was really, yeah. I, I think being a stand up is an incredibly vulnerable uh, yeah. experience. And so it's, it's nice when it's even more vulnerable. Yeah. And so crashing was great just to be able to see sort of the inner, yeah, the workings like of what the, it is. To this, be it, like a lot of people, I, I used to listen to this one podcast, um, and they're like, "Oh, it's just so he's just using that trope of women rooming, or women r- being the driving force to his life." Blah, blah, and I'm like, "Well, no, that's his actual experience. Mm-hmm. His wife did cheat on him, and then they yeah. became mm-hmm. friends afterwards, and it changed his life. Like, you can't if if you're telling a story." Based on truth, you can't change. I mean, you can heighten, but there's certain you can't change those fundamental facts, right? Right. Or yeah. the fundamental like emotions that come along with it, which is what like nuances stories like yeah. that so much. Well, and to be fair, like the funniest, the 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 best comedy is based in real experience. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't make that shit up. Oh, exactly. Can't make that shit up, and yeah. that's what people resonate with. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Uh, when you when you speak from that core of honesty when you're when you're writing or even just riffing it mm-hmm. it go, it goes a lot longer and a lot further than yeah. mm-hmm. than something that's like oh this carefully constructed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that, yeah that's one of the things too i find like there's literally a laugh in every second sentence that yeah. in the, this album yeah and yeah it's really cool mm-hmm. great um now just to wrap up um is there if someone was to ask you if they should listen to this album, what would you say? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, listen to it on a road trip to Regina. <laughs> <laughs> but don't come back with herpes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks for coming to Toronto yeah. to do the sketch. Thank, thank, thank you for having us on. Yeah. And you have a recurring show at the Roxy right mm-hmm. now going through till June, I think it was. When uh, it was May 16th is our oh. last show of this season. And then we'll be at the Edmonton Fringe. So. Excellent. Yeah, our next shows are March 27th and 28th at the Roxy. Terrific. All right. Well, thanks again, and uh, have a great day. Thank Thank you. You too, Matt.
You know how to book flights and hotels. All you're missing is a tool to plan the travel experiences you'll have once you arrive. That's why you need Viator. Book guided tours, activities, excursions, and more in one place to make your trip truly unforgettable. Viator has over 300,000 travel experiences to choose from. Everything from simple tours to extreme adventures and all the niche, interesting stuff in between. So you can plan something that everyone you're traveling with will enjoy. Real traveler reviews give the inside scoop from people who've already been on the experiences you're considering. So you can plan with confidence. Free cancellation helps you plan for the unexpected. And 24-7 customer support means you can travel worry-free. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. Find travel experiences for you. Do more with Viator. Looks like you need a vacation. Enter the five-hour energy Where Will the Tide Take You sweepstakes. You could win a $10,000 dream beach vacation. Imagine jet setting off to a tropical paradise. Having fun in the sun or diving at a gorgeous reef. It's up to you. No purchase necessary. Go to 5hetide.com for official rules and to enter. That's 5hetide.com. Enter today. Ends June 30th, 2024.